Baltimore fans feeling it tonight as they enter Hawkins Field. This could be the night that Vanderbilt captures this Nashville Regional after 51 wins during the season. Meanwhile, Indiana State, the Sycamores avoided elimination earlier today. Jake Beans and company getting taped up for another battle as they try to slow down the dynamic duo of Austin Martin and J.J. Blade, who leads the country in home runs. It's all coming your way in a matter of moments. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska, home of the College World Series. That's one way to get it started. It is caught! The 0-2. He got him. Gets one to hit, drives it to right. This one is gone! And the Beavers are on top of the college baseball world. And welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. As the road to Omaha does go right through the Music City, the Vanderbilt Commodores, the number two national seed, one win away from moving on, taking on Indiana State, who survived elimination earlier today out of the Missouri Valley Conference. And Indiana State did send Ohio State packing with a 10-5 win in our first game today. And their reward? The 51 win Vanderbilt Commodores, the most wins in the country so far in college baseball. Dave Neal alongside former LSU star and big leaker Todd Walker. Glad you could join us tonight. And Todd, Indiana State, this has been a scrappy bunch all season long. Had to scrap through their conference tournament, and now they get to play two today. I guess if you're a ball player, what more do you want? Well, Indiana State's won a few elimination games already to get to this point. They played Vanderbilt last night, lost 8-5, to five, but they battled them pretty good. So I guess they got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. They've won six of their last seven. Well, Vanderbilt feeling really good about where they are as a team. 51 wins. An SEC regular season championship, an SEC tournament championship. Their lineup, one through nine, has been dynamite. And really the two guys at the top of that lineup in yep. Martin and Blade, as good as they come. Austin Martin out of the leadoff spot for Vanderbilt, hitting 413 on the year. That's top five in the country. And the two-hole, J.J. Blade, 26 home runs. The anticipation pitch selection from these two guys, the ability to use the entire field is what makes them so great. This one-two punch for Vanderbilt is special. Look at the numbers. Austin Martin, fifth in Division I in batting average. J.J. Blade leads the country in home runs with 26. J.J. hitless last night, did get on base with a uh, walk, but nonetheless, you could tell he was frustrated, hoping for a big night tonight against Indiana State. And speaking of Indiana State, I mean, obviously a scrappy bunch. Uh, Mitch Hannes, their coach, certainly a, a guy that's in, uh, invested in the program, a former player, an All-American. And he's got a guy that's playing like an All-American right now, and Jake Means over at third well, base. Well, his entire defense is really good for Indiana State. But how about Jake Means at third base? I mean, this guy can really go seven hits in this tournament already. He can bunt for a base hit, too. He can do it all, it seems like. And at third base, wow, what a leather show over there at third. Look at the hop and the wherewithal to get that ball over to first base. What a cannon from the left side. Jake Means, one of the best third baseman in the Missouri Valley Conference. He's having a great regional. How about that? Hitting 500, scored a couple of runs, four runs batted in. He has been a lot of fun to watch. He'll need some help along the way. We'll see if the Sycamores have enough in the tank to get past perhaps the best team in all of college baseball. It'll be Indiana State and Vanderbilt. Lineups, first pitch coming up. Tim Corbin has built a legacy here at Vanderbilt. Most wins in school history, 732 now. He has produced 15 first-round draft picks, been to three College World Series, won a national title in 2014, played for it in 2015, and he has done it all and put this program on the map. And it's hard to say which is the best of his 17 teams here, but this team right here would be among the top, that is for sure. Been to 15 NCAA Regionals, 14th straight overall, and he's throwing out a very talented right-hander tonight, a guy that could easily be in the rotation and even maybe a Friday night guy for so many schools around the country, but he's been a midweek guy for Vanderbilt, Mason Hickman, 7-0 and on the year. And uh, favorite player, Bob Gibson, throws a little bit like Bob. Yeah, and last year he was in the rotation on the weekend. He was their Sunday third starter as a freshman All-American. Last Wednesday was his last start in the SEC tournament against Auburn. Went six innings, struck out nine. You're going to see 88 to 92, four seam with late life, a 12-6 breaking ball, a change 
primarily to left-handers. Hadn't lost this year, 7-0, and and he's got a tough act to follow. Drake Fellows threw a complete game in the opener of this regional. Kumar Rocker last night was great as well. He'll face an Indiana State lineup that has a couple of really talented hitters at the top in Clay Dungan, Jake Means, and Jared Watkins. One, two, three. And first pitch from Mason Hickman. Misses low, 1 and 0. Oh. This Indiana State team hitting 272 as a team. Coming off a Missouri Valley Conference tournament title. And Dungan fly ball out to center field where Pat DeMarco stands. And he'll make the catch, and that'll be the first out of the game. And here comes Jake Means. What a regional he has had. Seven hits. Played stellar defense at third. The senior going out big out of Gardner, Kansas. Yeah, you mentioned the senior. Indiana State runs eight seniors in this hitting lineup out there. Max Wright, the seven hole, only junior. Eighty-eight miles an hour on that fastball from Mason Hickman. The numbers on him are staggering this year. Po uh, opponents hit just 194 against him. The best number on this Vanderbilt staff. He has a whip, which is walks and hits per inning. A .095, and he gets the strikeout there. That is number 99 this year in 73 innings. Yeah, big boy, 6'6". Six, six. He gets tilt from that. Big up, upward arm angle, which makes 88 look a lot harder. And especially when he elevates, it's just tough to catch up to. Like we mentioned, Jake Means has seven hits in this tournament. He's red hot, but he blows it by him right there. Jared Watkins steps in. Four for 13 in the tournament. Well, this is what he did against Indiana State back in mid-April in a one-game meeting between these two clubs. Vanderbilt captured that game over the Sycamores. Mason Hickman has walked just 18 batters this season with a 2.2 ERA. Watkins, the senior, swinging a miss, and the inning is over. Eight pitches and a couple of strikeouts. How about this fastball from Mason Hickman? We talked about the late in life. Again, 88 to 89, but as a hitter, it just looks that much harder. Nobody can catch up to that high heat from Mason Hickman. Always a good time coming to Nashville, Tennessee. As this Nashville Regional is down to the finals. Vanderbilt one win away. Indiana State two wins away. Commodores. Step to the plate with a lineup featuring Julian Infante in the nine hole. All he has done this tournament is hit three doubles, a home run, and gone full for eight overall. In a lineup of hitters, he's been the one who has been most productive, perhaps, with those three doubles last night. Well, not every hitter is going to be effective all the time, but the great thing about this Vanderbilt offense is that if somebody doesn't do it, another one does. And there just really isn't a weak spot in the entire lineup. They're averaging 10 runs a game, one out of every two. So that's a pretty special lineup over there in that third base dugout. One and one to count to Austin Martin. Sixth in Division One for the sophomore with a 413 batting average. There's a strike two and two to Austin Martin. Zach Fry getting the baseball tonight for the Sycamores. He's been battling through some injuries since transferring from Heartland Community College. So hasn't pitched a bunch this year. And they give him the ball. And how about that? Paints the black and gets Martin looking. Well, that already says something about Zach Fry striking out one of the toughest hitters in the country. 5'10", 150-pound junior from Bloomington, Illinois. It's his second start of the year. Like you mentioned, he's been hurt. His first start was in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Final. They had to beat Dallas Baptist twice. He had the ball in the first game, went two innings, gave up three hits and two runs. Mid-80s fastball, as you saw right there. Pretty good location. Lettered in cheer his senior year. What does that mean? He's an athlete on the, on the mound.
150 pounds. The guy he's facing on the mound, Mason Hickman, six foot six, 230 pounds. Yeah, and Indiana State will tell you this is probably going to be a staff day. It'd be hard to imagine Zach Fry being able to go a long way in this game. Again, only a second start. Here's J.J. Bladé, SEC Player of the Year. Gaudy numbers at 354, 26 home runs, 68 runs batted in. And again, last night went hitless. Struck out twice, but did pick up a walk. 0 for 4 total, and that doesn't happen very often. Look how they play J.J. Bladé. Four, I mean, legitimately four outfielders. Second baseman is basically out there, too. That's five. And then the first baseman, and you got the third baseman shifted over, Means to play short. Pops him up in the infield. Jake Means can't find it. Whew, recovers nicely. Kind of like you were worried. Didn't want him to get hit. It almost seems like Jake Means will catch it even if he can't see it. Yeah, the way it's gone this yeah, week, you're right. Yeah, this guy is really good over at the hot corner. Loses it, comes oh. back to find it. He's the only guy that could catch it over there. Pitcher's getting out of the way, and everybody else is in the outfield. So here's Ethan Paul. Ethan Paul, a senior shortstop out of Bellevue, Washington. On the year, hitting 327 with nine homers and 68, or excuse me, 70 runs batted in. Number one in this Vanderbilt lineup at RBIs. He also leads him in doubles with 21. Three hits this weekend. He's out in front, 2 0 on Zach Fry, who has thrown just five and a third innings all season long. Vanderbilt Commodores have won 11 in a row. Their last loss was on May 11th to Missouri. That snapped a 13-game winning streak. Commodores have only had two losses to non-NCAA tournament teams this year. They lost to Austin P in 10 innings, and they lost 5-2 to Missouri. Any baseballs you think they find in the football stadium? That ball just hit the 50-yard <laughs> line. I mean, really, a lot of foul balls that go over that. That football stadium backs up to this baseball stadium right beyond the left bleachers. That one is up and away, and a 3-2 pitch is off the mark, so Ethan Paul draws a walk. So Philip Clark in the DH role tonight, hitting cleanup. We've seen Clark catch the first two games for Vanderbilt this weekend. Giving way today to Ty, Vuval, Ty Duvall, who's been the DH. They just kind of flip-flop. That has popped up, and that'll be back into the seats. Philip Clark, a 2019 first-team All-SEC. One of the 14 Buster Posey semifinalists for the best catcher in college baseball. He's up against some tough competition. Hadley Rutschman yeah. from Oregon State. Catcher from Baylor. Shay Langlers. 0-1 on Clark. <laughs> Tell you what, it's hard. You know, this time of the year, generally, staffs will get scouting reports on pitchers because they've thrown so many innings and so many games. But there is nothing out there on Zach Fry in five <laughs> innings all year. Indiana State's SID really couldn't tell us much yeah. about him. 
Well, he just hadn't, yeah, he hadn't thrown five innings on the year. He's not going to light up the radar gun, but he's a competitor. He's going to be around the plate. Indiana State knocked off Ohio State this afternoon. That one misses inside. It's now two and one to Clark. Clark last night went 0 for 4 with a strikeout against the Sycamores. Fouled straight back, big cut from Clark, two and two now. A lot of position players will tell you it's tough to DH. I mean, they needed to give Philip Clark a rest, but now he's the DH, and you just don't feel like you're part of the game. You hit, go sit down, come back for a few innings, hit again, and it's just a different feel at the plate. Pop up behind the bag at second. Who's going to make the play? Dungan says he has it, and he does. Vandy will leave one. We have played one. Scoreless here in Nashville. How about Texas A&M walking off West Virginia? They were down 9-1 to in the seventh. Two grand slams, the last of which came from Bryce Blom with two outs in the ninth to win it 11-10. to that is nuts. And the bottom line there, Florida State advances to the Super Regionals. They knock off Georgia the second time in back-to-back -back years now for the Bulldogs that they have not been able to hold serve in their own building after being a top eight national seed. So the Seminoles are paired up with the Baton Rouge Regional. So if LSU can come out of that as the victor, Florida State would head to Baton Rouge for a Super Regional. Can you imagine what that place would be like? Oh, man. Electric. C.J. Huntley steps in. The senior left fielder working against Mason Hickman, who struck out a couple of Sycamore batters. And now it's one and two. Senior out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Three in a row for Mason Hickman. Mitch Hanna is now in his sixth season at Indiana State. Just surpassed the 200 win plateau. All-American for the Sycamores back in 1989, a 16th round draft picked by the Brewers. Played all the way up into double-A ball. And actually had an injury that kind of took the steam out of him. Speaking of steam, that one is hammered to right. It's out of here. Robbie Enriquez lights up the scoreboard for Indiana State. It's one to nothing. Indiana State has been real good defensively all year, and their pitchers can keep it around the zone. The question for them was their offense. They've had 40 hits in three games in this regional, and Robbie Enriquez out of the five-hole, blast one to right field to put Indiana State on the board. His fifth homer of the year. These guys have had a tough time catching up to this fastball, but not Robbie. Right down the middle, and that ball was crashed. Now Chris Ayers, the designated hitter to step in. Chris has really struggled here in this regional. Yeah, they had Joe Boyle play earlier today. I haven't played in this tournament. They've been playing Chris Ayers. Reached base all five times. He was at the plate three for three with a home run and a double tonight with the matchup. They like to go with the left-hander, Chris Ayers, who, like you said, has struggled in this tournament, but was great in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. In fact, he was the MVP with three home runs. 
senior out of Houston, Texas. Looking for his first hit this weekend. Not going to come at that at bat. Another strikeout. That's four now for Hickman. But Enriquez. With a long shot over the right field fence. By the way, it's 33rd RBI. Enriquez has 14 RBIs now in his last 16 games. As Max Wright will step in. Ground ball to the right side. Nice play by Harrison Ray. Comes up throwing, and the inning is, excuse me, second, is over. And that'll be an Indiana State lead early, one to nothing. Robbie Enriquez with the ambush on the fastball from Mason Hickman. And the Sycamores are up one to nothing through one and a half. Mitch Anderson is Indiana State Sycamores out of the Missouri Valley where they won the conference tournament. Started 20 and 2 this year. The best in program history, and they have played some quality competition throughout the year with nine wins against Power Five schools. That ninth came earlier today against Ohio State as Pat DeMarco skies one. Caught out there by Jared Watkins. Tenth overall appearance in the NCAA tournament, first since 2014. Of course, they were went, went to the College World Series in 1986. Member of that team, right there, Coach Hannes. Also a member of the Indiana State Hall of Fame. They won their first. NCAA tournament game since 1995. Earlier this week, Steven Scott, another one that is towering in the sky, but that'll hit the seats. But that College World Series team from Indiana State back in 1986, look at your lower left. Down low, there's Mitch Hannes. <laughs> Larry Bird on that team? No, he's on that 79 team. Oh, okay. He's telling us the reason his baseball career ended. He was playing double-A baseball and got into a collision, trying to play, turn a double play. The base runner ran right into him. They collided, knocked his two front teeth out, also damaged his shoulder, couldn't play the rest of the year. It said just kind of just never was the same after that. Yeah, that can happen. The collision he had at second base sounded a lot worse than anything I've ever had. It sounded like a truck wreck out there. Lost some teeth. Messed up his arm. Got a veteran club here. A lot of J.C. transfers for this team. There are a few long-time Sycamores out there, like this shortstop, Clay Dungan. Four-year player and real leader on this team. And a solid shortstop at that. He's got the TV tape looking sharp tonight. <laughs> You know, I actually did that. You could feel your hands a little more. Really? Yeah. You start tightening up your wrist and, you know, your vessels in your right. wrist. It makes you feel your hands more. That's why I would do it. And then, obviously, also, of course, to, you know, fend off any bullets that might come your way. And it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Swing and a miss. Steven Scott. Second strikeout for Zach Fry. There's a look at their rosters. Now there's 35 players on a roster. 30 of those are juniors or seniors. Yeah, that's incredible. 30 of 35 juniors or seniors. Wow. That's why they're here. They got the veteran leadership. Got experience. Maybe Dallas Baptist twice, twice for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Dallas Baptist in the NCAA Tournament right now, trying to hang on and win a regional. As Harrison Ray steps in, the junior second baseman, 279 on the year for Harrison. Check swing, did he go? No, says first base umpire Brian Miller. Some check swings 
Yeah, he had to go across the plane of the plate. They break his wrist. Really close. Eighty-six miles an hour in there to Harrison Ray at Longwood, Florida. Harrison with a couple of home runs on the year does have seventeen doubles. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Zach Fry. 12-pitch inning. Wow, Zach Fry so far has been really accurate with his fastball, especially on the outside corner. And then watch this hammer. To strike out Harrison Ray. Through two, one to nothing. Sycamore. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Commodore stretching it out between innings. We move to inning number three and a one nothing Indiana State lead on a home run off the bat of Robbie Enriquez, his fifth of the year. Caught up to one of those Mason Hickman fastballs, but Mason has struck out four already through two frames. He has thrown 17 pitches, 15 have been four strikes. And the first pitch to Dane Toplin just off the plate. The senior Canadian, six foot four, first baseman, 228 on the year, five homers, one of those this weekend. 18 runs batted in, but it has been a struggle since that home run. Well, the key tonight for the Sycamores is to get Hickman early. Home run by. Robbie Enriquez was early in the count. Max Wright just hit a bullet to second early in the count. You let him get deeper in the count, and Mason Hickman is going to elevate that fastball on you or drop that curve either way. He gets the swing and miss. 3-0. and oh. Four-pitch walk. He didn't walk many guys. That's just the 19th walk this season in 75 innings. No, it's a leadoff walk, number one. And number two, it's to a guy that strike, has struck out six times in this tournament already. Luke Fagan, nine-hole hitter coming up. The senior center fielder. Five hits this weekend. Two of those are doubles. He scored three run, runs. Austin Martin up at third base, expecting the bunt. I know you're not a big bunt guy. but No, we talked about that. I don't mind the second to third bunt with nobody out. Right. Put the guy on third. I remember as a hitter, the guy on third base, I felt a lot better by myself. All you have to do is put it in the outfield. But the bunt from first to second to, get, to give him an out. And then you're expecting somebody else to get a base hit with only the two outs. I just, and especially early in the game, it, I just, I just don't like it. But you're dealing with an eight hole just walk. Now you get the nine hole fake, and if you bunch, you get your, you roll the lineup over to one two. The other factor on this field is the turf. I mean, you really have to deaden that punt, or it goes right to somebody, and they'll get the force at second base. So that's a factor as well here in, in Nashville. We've seen Austin Martin at third base gobble up some of those attempted bunts, barehanded to make strong throws. And they're not necessarily trying to pick off Toflin at first. They want to get some indication from Fagan that he might bunt. So they're trying to get him to flinch or do something to let them know whether or not he's bunting. If he doesn't do anything, they know he's swinging, then they can call a pitch accordingly. Five straight balls, only two in the first two innings. Wow, he just can't find the zone right now. Yeah, this should be a take. Six balls in a row, and nine hole Luke Fagan needs to take a pitch. Swinging on 2 0 out to left. So now see what happens is Mason Hickman all of a sudden feels better about himself. Not to say right. he couldn't have climbed back in that at bat, but one pitch and I get an out when I was struggling a little bit. Now I feel pretty good. In fact, I'm one pitch away from getting out of this inning. 
He can get dung into ground, hit a ground ball here. Duncan, his first time up, though, flew out to center field. The Sycamore leadoff band. Average at 308. He's got some good pop with nine home runs. Breaking ball in there for a strike. A little bit low. Hey, Auburn trying to close out Georgia Tech and win that regional. It's 3-0 Tigers over the Jackets. Auburn one win away. Georgia Tech two wins away. And that regional in Atlanta. Miami's up on Mississippi State in Starkville. Up in the third, one to nothing. Duke, man, they just have a way of playing well in the regionals. Won the regional in Athens last year, advanced. Now, looks like they're about to win that regional as well. Two and one. Two and two. For the first two innings for Mason Hickman, very stress free, other than the one fastball he got away from him to Enriquez. Had four strikeouts, but he has had to work here in the third. It's like Mason Hickman when he gets to two strikes. This is where he really focuses down. He makes his pitch. Once he smells strikeouts, man, he really dots those fastballs. Fastball in the corner, elevated fastball. Drop that curve load, try to get the swing and miss. Popped him up. Shallow center, long run for DeMarco. Who's going to make the catch? Ethan Paul coming from shortstop. He's in shallow right. Yeah, he's like, out of those four, he would be the least likely, you think, would make that play. Ethan Paul all the way from the shortstop position to get it. I don't know if DeMarco even can pick it up from center field. It's just ball straight up in the air and right, short right center field. DeMarco's coming in, looks at Harrison Ray. He's out of the picture, and then... Ethan Paul, Harrison Ray's not going to make that basket catch. J.J. Bleday in there as well. What a play by the shortstop. Two down now for Jake Means. He struck out his first time against Mason Hickman. Hickman started this inning off with six straight pitches that missed the strike zone. Austin Martin playing a long way back. We saw Jake Means drop down a bunt earlier today for a base hit. They got Harrison Ray on the shortstop side of the bag. Yeah, there's nobody on the right side of the infield. We'll talk to Mitch Hannes coming up next inning. Interesting to see what they were doing between games today. There was about... Two hours, 45 minutes, almost three hours between games for them. Fonte holding him on. Harrison Ray on the left side of the bag. Just got a pitch to it. The ball that will hurt you is the fastball in where Jake Means is looking off speed and he's late on the pitch. That, that ball will be driven out to right field. Means kind of kind of bent his legs a little bit, make this look a little higher than it probably actually was. Duval with the frame. 
Yeah, looked down at Vanderbilt pitching coach Scotty Brown. He had a few words for our home plate umpire Heath Jones on that last one. And that one is up, and it's a walk. The second this inning. Yeah, so I feel like Sycamore's let him off the hook a little bit. He's struggling in this inning in the third. Begging on a 2-0 count, flies out to left. And then Dungan pops it up. When you see a pitcher struggling, that's when it was an indication to me that you got to get deep in the count. But along those lines, you know, if you are going to get deep, you can't be afraid to swing with two strikes. A lot of times hitters are, and so they'll go a little earlier. The way to attack Hickman is early because, again, he'll bury you. He's got a lot of strikeouts. But in this scenario, when you can see him struggling, you want to take a lot of pitches. And if he's going to self-implode, you got to let him do it. I wonder if Scott Brown might have a comment or two on the way back to the dugout. Yeah, he is. He's looking at him right now, saying uh, you could tell he was eyeballing home plate umpire Heath Jones. <laughs> I think those two are having the discussion right <laughs> yeah, now. Going at it, yeah. Oh, he laughed. Uh, he gave him a little smile. I think the only thing you really could say is don't let the hitter dictate the ball and strike again. Kind of bends over to make that ball look a little higher. That's in there for a strike. How about the ACC? Florida State advances, North Carolina advances, both the fifth best teams in the ACC, both of them headed to the Supers. Carolina just knocked off Tennessee. That is fouled out of play. 0 oh, and 2 now on Jared Watkins. Gets through the glove of Duvall, and the runners will move up 90 feet. So second and third now for Jared Watkins on a 1-2 pitch. Well, the pitch was high. Duvall has to kind of jump up to grab it a little late with the glove. Kind of popped it out of his glove as he was coming up. Sycamore is now second and third with two outs. Strike three. Inning is over. Mason Hickman becomes a different pitcher with two strikes. Look at the paint job on this fastball by Jared Watkins. One nothing after two and a half. Indiana State leading Vanderbilt one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Mitch Hannes joins us down in that Indiana State dugout. Coach, obviously at the old day night double header. Had about three hours between games. What'd you do with your club? Well, we went back to the hotel for about an hour. Not very long, but uh, wasn't any use to, to do much. We went back for about an hour, came back, and took some ground balls, got ready to go. Coach, you battled Vanderbilt last night. Many believe is the best team in the country. You're ahead in this game. What have you liked from your offense so far? Well, not, not much from our offense yet. <laughs> I like what we've gotten out of the young man on the mound so far. Just 
you know, we got a couple walks there that in, and we strike out looking to end it. we got to take advantage of opportunities a little better when they're given to us tonight. Talk to me about Zach Fry a little bit. Uh, give me the backstory on him. Not much out there about Zach. He, he's a young guy, came in from junior college, had arm issues. We, we brought him along really slow, started throwing him toward the tail end of the season a little bit. Uh, not much, but just a really good competitor. Coach, your defense has been great this year. How about Jake Means at third base? Wow, it's yeah, been impressive. He, he was the defender of the year in our league. and he, He's just, uh, I tell our assistants all the time, please find another Jake Means because he's saved so many runs for us. He's been fun to watch. been fun watching your club. Got it out here, and uh, we'll uh, see what happens the rest of the night. Thanks okay, for joining guys, us. I appreciate it. All right, Mitch, thanks. Ty Duvall stepping in. That one just misses for the junior catcher. Eight and nine, and then Austin Martin in the top of the lineup. That is a strike. Duvall was heading down to first. Good to me. Yeah, right at the knees. I'm with you. Well, the extra pitch pays off because now Duvall will turn the corner. He's on his way to second. Here's a throw. It's in time. And we're going to say safe. He got a hand in the bag before the tag. Boy, Huntley came up in a hurry with that baseball. Well, I'm sure they're going to replay this one. Doug Vines was right on top of that at second base, so I'm sure that he got it right. Let's take another look. Clearly, the ball beats him to the bag, but, yeah, he puts a tag on his chest as his hands get in there. Let's see if he actually got his hands in there before the tag was applied. Ooh, that's close. If anything, he got his left hand in there first. The right hand wasn't in before the tag was made. And they're going to go check this one out. The ball clearly beat him there. It's just a matter of when did the glove touch him? Yeah, Huntley got that ball in quick and an accurate throw to second base. Watkins puts the tag on, but... That's tough because you want to put that tag exactly where Watkins put it down, but you see their hands fly out. You got to sweep it. Try to get one of the hands before he gets in there like that. And let's try it again. Did he get in there with his left hand before the tag was applied to his chest? Again, Watkins puts it in the right spot. But once you see those hands extended, you want to sweep one of them. You just can't see the left hand yet if it's hit the bag. Second base umpire, Doug Vines, had his face right in there. Oh, boy. It's hard to tell where he where he tags him. Now it looks like the right hand got there before the left. But in the other angle, it doesn't look like <laughs> the right hand got there. These umpires any good? My goodness. they got to make plays in real time. Make calls like that. I mean, Doug Vines is on top of that. All right. This is crazy that we have got some great looks at this, and we still can't figure it out. At least ten looks, and I can't tell you definitively if he got in or not. Doug Vines all over it, calls him safe. And the, that's the reverse call, and I was at the second one this entire yeah. tournament. That, that is so close. Credit the Sycamore defense for getting that ball in quick. Wow, well, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised. That, that looked like one of those where there wasn't indisputable video evidence to overturn that. But they did. And heads up play by C.J. Huntley to get that ball back so quickly and make a perfect throw.
Julian Infante. What a night he had last night. Here at Hawkins Field, three doubles. He's hitting 500 in this tournament. Also hit his ninth home run of the season earlier this weekend. The nine hole hitter up to 239. Made a couple of dynamite plays with his glove last night as well. Two and two. Now it's full. That ball has hit a mile in the air. C.J. Huntley will make the catch. That'll be out number two. And the lineup will flip back to the top of the lineup and Austin Martin. Third baseman number 16, Austin Martin. Martin struck out looking. His first time up. Fouls it straight back. Martin, the first team All SEC. Golden Spike semifinalist, a Dick Hauser Trophy semifinalist. He's now top seven in Vandy history in single season hits with 95. He has 170 hits already in his career. That's just off the plate, two and one. He's just 12 hits shy, the program record for hits in a season. That's held by Warner Jones, set back in 2004. out of play. He'll get another swing at it. The thing I like about Austin Martin is not just about his offense. It's the fact that he's turned himself into a really good third baseman. Played in the outfield last year. And needed to find a spot in the infield this year. and He has worked really hard to make some good solid plays over there. And he'll draw the walk. Yeah, you asked Tim Corbin about that. Arm strength's good enough to play on the left side, and he can really hit. We know that. And here comes J.J. Blade. He popped up his first time up. The nation leader in home runs with 26. The power numbers this year are off the charts compared to the first two seasons for J.J. Of course, had some injuries along the way those first couple of years and been very healthy this year. And the numbers show that. 68 runs batted in. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's gotten a lot stronger. Clearly a lot wiser. You know, you start you start seeing pitches a little differently when you've seen a lot in college, him being a junior now. Played in the Cape Cod League, used the wood bat all summer. I always thought that helped. I played in the Cape and came back and went from the wood back to the metal, and I felt that much stronger. Oh, better. A meatball slide right by him. JJ having a look again at a shift to the right side. Second baseman Jared Watkins playing in shallow right, but only three outfielders this particular at bat because the runner at first, they got to keep dunging in the infield. Are you a believer in the shift? No, not really. The spray charts would, would tell you that you need to, but I've seen it busted so many times. I just think there's other factors involved. Mainly the pitcher's psyche. You know, he delivers the pitch, and yeah. the ball's hit to the shortstop, and he turns around and nobody's there. That's got to that's gotta affect him. And again, you've got to make perfect pitches to the shift, you know? I mean, like in this case right here, if J.J. Bidet were to get behind, they wouldn't do it any differently, you know. And then he throws the fastball in. He didn't know what Bidet's thinking. He's thinking off speed. He gets jammed. That's a base hit to the left side. Ball four. Third walk to Zach Fry. And now you have two on for Number Ethan Paul. Number 10, Ethan Paul. Jeremy Guerrero, the left-hander. wonder if Mitch Hannes might make a decision here on how to pitch Ethan Paul the three hole hitter he walked him last time yeah I remember this inning started off with a base hit by Ty Duvall down left field line looked to be a double got thrown out at second base fly out by Infante ahead in the count two walks two outs in the inning Trailing one to nothing. A hundred, almost a hundred points better from 18 to 19 for Ethan Paul. 70 runs batted in. It helps when you have guys like Austin Martin and J.J. Bleday in front of you. A Commodore shortstop. First pitch he sees, fouls it straight back. He's walked back to back, guys. Surprised he swung at the first pitch? A little bit. Uh, one thing to factor in is whether or not that guy on the mound is accurate or whether he can, you know, or not. Zach Fry has been around the plate. That was a nice pitch, though. Strike one. Now it's 0-2. But Ethan Paul being very aggressive to a guy, again, that just walked the two in front. Just like we talked about with Hickman, if you got a guy struggling a little bit, I always had a tendency to get a little deeper in counts. I, didn't, I wasn't afraid to swing with two strikes, so that's important, but... Tip held on to by Max Wright. The inning is over. Vandy will leave a couple of runners on. To your point, I think that's what got Zach Fry a little confidence from Ethan Paul. Swung at the first pitch that might have been on the outside corner. And look at this pitch. Inside just drops out of the zone. And Zach Fry avoids damage here in the third.
Well, some NCAA tournament headlines for you. Louisville upset yesterday, but they have bounced back. I think they're angry. They've scored 20 runs in two games today. Antoine Duplantis, he's been chasing it all year, but he finally gets the LSU career hitch record, surpassing Eddie Furness. And North Carolina, they advance. They're waiting to see what happens with the Georgia Tech regional. The Jackets have to beat Auburn twice. And right now, Auburn out in front, three to nothing. Ground ball, actually a line drive. Picked by Ethan Paul off his shoelaces. The right fielder, number 17, Robbie. So North Carolina knocks off Tennessee, and they're paired with that Georgia Tech, uh, that the Atlanta Regional, where Georgia Tech was the number one seed, but they lost yesterday on a walk-off, three-run shot to the Tigers, and now they've won their elimination game this morning. That one is off the glove of Infante. Enriquez will turn the corner. He will wind up with a double. So what a start for Robbie Enriquez. A home run and now a smoke double down the line off the glove of Infante. Well, bad start for Mason Hickman in this fourth inning. The bullet to short by Huntley and now Enriquez. Already a home run with curveball low and in. And they tell you not to throw that off speed low and into left-handed hitters, and that's why Robbie Enriquez just drops the head on it and hits it down the right field line for a double. Big tournament for Robbie Enriquez, his sixth hit. So now Chris Ayers will step in. Boy, Mason Hickman is cruising through the first two innings. Had lost his control in the third. First hit this weekend. Struck out his last time up. No swing, says Mark Buchanan. Corbin has just about everybody available to him tonight out of that bullpen. There's a breaking ball in there for a strike. It's three and two on Ayers. Yeah, first base open allows Hickman to throw that pitch on a fastball count three and one. He walks him. He's got Max Wright, the junior, on deck who grounded out the second last time up. Chance to get the double play and get out of the inning. Six strikeouts for Hickman. That's just smart. Drops the three-one curve on Chris Ayers, and now Chris Ayers is looking for it. He buzzes that fastball middle end to freeze him up for the second out. right now with two outs the sycamore catcher grounded out his first time up robbie enriquez out there at second base after a double down the right field line that's upstairs at 87 miles an hour
strike. Duke on top of Texas A&M, four to one. And now West Virginia, the Morgantown Regional, hosted by West Virginia, who got bounced earlier today. Duke, one went away from moving to the Supers. Texas Tech holding on down in Lubbock. They hold serve, and they will advance to the Supers. There's another strike. They all are looking for that curveball. That's why they get froze up on those fastballs. And now you start to change your mind as a hitter and start looking a little more fastball. And that's when he drops the curve on you. Two outs, two strikes. On Max Wright. Swing and a miss. Seven strikeouts. Sycamores leave a runner at second. But the Commodores trail by a run. Well, the top 16 seeds all hosting regionals, and three of them have bowed out already. Georgia, Oregon State, and West Virginia. And you see the teams on the right are paired with the teams on the left. Those regionals are, and things will get a little wacky now with Georgia not hosting a super regional. Georgia Tech struggling a bit right now, as you see Texas Tech. They uh, do what they need to do, take down Dallas Baptist, so they move on. and. That's Stillwater Regional, hosted by Oklahoma State. That would be a Big 12 showdown in the Supers. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, be sure to go to NCAA.com to figure out where your favorite team's headed. Phillip Clark 0 for 1 with a pop out. It's clean up in this lineup and just mashed it deep into the night here in Nashville. We are tied at one on Philip Clark's seventh home run of the year at a 64th RBI. Well, you called it, Cardinal. 0 for 1 with a pop out. This one's a pop and out of the park and a blast. My goodness, that ball was blasted to right field for Philip Clark. It's down there by the hospital. My goodness, we thought we saw some long home runs earlier, but this might top them all. Yeah, just right down the middle and a little low and all barrel. For Philip Clark. His 100th career RBI for Philip Clark. The seventh home run of the year. Pat DeMarco. Fouls that back, two and one to count. He popped up his first time as well. 61 pitches now, or excuse me, 64 pitches now for Zach Fry. That one is fouled back out of play as well. Two and two. That was Philip Clark's first hit of the regional. He was 0 for 9 before that shot. Comes back though, Zach Fry does, and gets the strikeout. His fifth of the game. Fry's been good. Fastballs in and out. Curveballs working. Dropped an occasional change that have been effective as well. And Jordan Teague's the pitching coach on the way out to the mound. Talk to Zach Fry and company. That'll be it for Zach Fry. Impressive for the young man who's coming off arm injury and only threw five innings this year.
Yeah, you kind of hope he'd stick around, but that's why he's leaving the ball game. But how about that home run by Philip Clark to tie this game at one? And Vanderbilt's not done yet. That it, it, you have to chuckle. I mean, this is what happens in postseason baseball. Zach Fry threw five and a third all year. He comes out here and throws three and a third, gives up two hits, strikes out five against perhaps the best lineup in college baseball. Well, it's motivation. And for Zach Fry, he was really good tonight with his location. But now they will turn it over to Jeremy Guerrero, the junior out of Illinois. Second time we've seen him this weekend. One and two on the year with a 6-6 ERA. The lefty will throw to Steven Scott, who struck out his first time in a 1-1 ball game. The Duke Blue Devils just advanced as they win that Morgantown Regional. is matched up with this one. There's a strike, two and one. So yeah, Duke would be coming here if Vanderbilt can win one more game. That one's out of play, two and two. Guerrero making his 18th appearance. He started seven games this year, so he's a guy that can certainly chew up some innings for you. Guerrero has given up eight home runs, tied for the most on this team. Sycamores, the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament Champs. Three straight foul balls into the football stadium. Wind, as has been the case all weekend, blowing out here at Hawkins Field. Well, we have seen some monstrous home runs in the shadows of Vanderbilt Stadium. Another foul ball by Scott. Uh, he's got a piece of just about everything Jeremy Guerrero throws and keeps battling up there. Okay, he be ready for, might be ready for some new batting gloves. Things look all beat up. Well, he's been pretty hot lately. Yeah, don't change it, right? You want to change. Guerrero with a big breaking ball. Strikes out Steven Scott. Yeah, the break got that one. Steven Scott saw that ball high, and it that had a little more bite to it. Comes down in the zone. Well, here are the two uh, regionals that are paired up, Morgantown and Nashville. So Duke wins. They take down Texas A&M tonight. The Aggies had to win an elimination game against West Virginia earlier today via a Grand Slam walk-off. And they will see what happens here in Nashville. But Duke moving on to the Supers again. Well, 
talk with that man, Tim Corbin. In the top of the fifth inning. By the way, I'm, I'm digging these Vandy uniforms this year. Kind of a new look for Vandy. That ball's mashed to center field off the bat of Harrison Ray, but not deep enough. That got the crowd on their feet for a moment. Luke Fagan, though, tracks it down at the track. We are tied at one. Tim Corbin joining us now in that Vanderbilt dugout area. And, uh, Coach, congrats on getting to the regional final. Some work left to do. Your thoughts offensively, you know, we've seen these bats so explosive all year. But tonight, looks like things are a little different for you. What have you been seeing from your perspective? Well, I thought the kid did a nice job of just getting ahead, um, downshifting us a little bit, throwing the ball a little bit away. Um, not really a whole lot of base runs. I mean, we did have that one inning with the two walks. We just couldn't come up with a hit. But uh, we'll, we'll get it going. Coach Mason Hickman on the mound. Seemed like he struggled a little bit a few innings ago, but seems to have recovered. What have you seen from him? Well, he's pretty good. I mean, he, he throws a lot of strikes. He's, he's very good at coming after the hitter, and uh, he's got a good way about him on, on the mound, even though he's a sophomore. He's pretty mature on the mound. He got, never really lets the game speed up on him. You know, this time of the year, you've been in this situation before. What's your message to a team as you get set for a regional final situation? Well, I think less and less all the time. I mean, I think when you get to this point right now, you kind of let it go a little bit. I mean, you set them up with the organization and the structure of what's going to happen inside the game. But after that, you just let them play. I mean, it's their game. They've worked for a long time to get these moments, and you just let them ride. Uh, last thing, Tyler Brown mm -hmm. last night. Wasn't his best night. Obviously, he's been so good for you all year. Do you go back to him tonight in a situation if it calls for it? I mean, do you throw him back out there? Is he good enough to, to go in terms of the number of pitches he threw last night? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's okay. He threw 30, but uh, he's a very durable kid, and he works hard at it. So, yeah, he's always ready to go. All right, Coach, we'll let you go. Thanks for the time. Okay, Danny. Thanks, Corey. Right. Yep. Dane Toflin steps in. Two and two on him. That one misses. Second full count tonight for Mason Hickman. Got him to pop it up on the right side. Harrison Ray will make the catch, and that'll be out number one. Well, Certainly, when it comes to making a champion, they know how to do it here at Vanderbilt. Won seven of their last eight SEC series. They did lose a Georgia series earlier this year, but since then they have been rolling. Offensively, it has been just a dynamic group. They lead the SEC in batting average, home runs, RPIs, among others. And look where they rank in Division I in those numbers. Fourth in batting average. They are seventh in home runs with 83. And it's... You could tell when we talked to Corbs just a minute ago, feels confident that this group will get it turned around today, though their bats have been very quiet as Fagan pops up again to Harrison Ray. Well, their defense tops in the country, too. Only 42 errors in 61 games. They've been real impressive. Only two SEC weekend losses out of 10. They lost to Georgia, like you mentioned. Also, Texas A&M beat them on the opening weekend, but they've been really good all year long. Won the SEC tournament last week. They've won 11 in a row, but over their last 25 games, they have just been crushing folks. They'll start Clay Dungan off with a breaking ball. Clay 0 for 2 today at the top of this Sycamore lineup.
Check swing at the plate. Down in the dirt. Duvall throws to first. Inning is over. 12 pitch inning. The second one, two, three frame for Mason Hickman. Big shout out to my alma mater, Florida State, as they roll through that Athens Regional. They take down Georgia tonight. So Mike Martin, who's retiring at the end of the season, gets to play another weekend. Earlier this year, Eduardo Perez had a chance to sit down and talk, chat with his old coach at Florida State. Coach, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as a guy that did it the right way. He was competitive. He never put anything before the players. The players are his main objective. I said I would know when it's time. I know 40 years is enough. The next guy that comes in, I think he'll be pleased with me because I left him a good schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Seminoles waiting to see what will happen. LSU is the regionals we just showed you that they are paired with in Baton Rouge. But right now, Southern Miss, who has to knock off LSU twice, they have tied it up. It's three apiece in Baton Rouge now in the top of the fifth inning. That was your old stomping grounds. Who do you think takes over at Florida State? Eduardo Perez, is he in the mix there? You know, Eduardo, I think, would be great. I do. Um, I kind of part of me because I know Mike Martin Jr. so well and have for so long, and he's so dedicated to that program. You know, I, I hope he gets a, a fair shake at it. Yeah. You know, another name that's been popped up there is at Tennessee. Tony Vitello lately has been bannered around by my buddies down in Seminole land. Yeah, but he's only been in Tennessee two years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's still young there. So, There's Doug McCavich played there. Yeah. You know, he's in the minor league system as a coach. Ty Duvall strikes out. Second strikeout for Guerrero. These are the teams that are heading to the Super Regionals one step away from Omaha. Texas Tech, North Carolina, Florida State, their 17th Super Regional appearance. Three ACC schools already in the Super Regionals. Auburn up 4-1 to one now in the top of the ninth over Georgia Tech. They are just a few outs away from heading to a Super Regional. Julian Infante. You can't stop number 22 this weekend. His second home run of this Regional. It's 2-1 to one, Vanderbilt. Julian Infante two years ago popped 11 home runs. Since then, he has just struggled offensively. That's why he's in the nine hole. But in this tournament, there has been no struggle. That ball low and in, and he hammers this ball over the tent in left field, and everybody knew it right away. Look how excited his boys are. Tim Corbin talks a lot about Julian Infante and how much of a great teammate he is, and you know his teammates are fired up after that one. Go with one out and one in, Austin Martin. Walked his last time, 0 for 1 today. Infante with his 35th RBI. Now with 10 home runs. Sharply hit out to Dungan. Across the diamond and Martin is retired. What a weekend it's been for Julian Infante. Three doubles, two home runs. Just crazy. Yeah. Well, he had the potential. Again, he had a huge sophomore year two years ago. Struggled last year, and I guess if you're going to find it, now's the time to do it. Infante, 5 for 10 in this regional. Here's J.J. Bladé. He looks at a strike. J.J. walked his last time. Smokes it, but right out to the second baseman, Watkins. And the inning is over.
Julian Infante, second home run of this tournament. Three doubles. Dude hadn't even hit a single yet, but the big damage numbers coming out of the nine hole for Vanderbilt. It's two to one. Three runs on the board, and they've all come via the home run. Robert Enriquez in the second with the pound to right field. Vanderbilt says, whatever you can do, I can do better. Philip Clark in the fourth inning. Hammers this ball. It's gone. And Julian Infante out of the nine hole just hit a long home run over the tent in left field, and that's where we're at. Two to one, Vanderbilt. Jake Means to start things off. The two-hole hitter. Fouls that one into the Vanderbilt dugout. 0-2 on Means. Hickman up to 66 pitches. Boy, they have found the power source. Both these clubs down the stretch. Jake Means on the season has five home runs. He has struck out and walked. Popped him up. Will it stay in play? Infante in foul territory near that dugout will make the catch, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Jared Watkins 0 for 2, grabbing a bat. Another full house here tonight at Hawkins Stadium. Hawkins Field, I should say. Their 15th sellout of the year. Gloved at third by Mark. But then air mails the throw. We've seen such good third base play from every team in this term, and Austin Martin with a great play. And sometimes you have too much time. You think about it too much, and he just launched that ball over Julian Infante's head. That's why I always thought when you made a, you know, a nice big play like that, you try to get rid of it as quick as possible. He had time, of course, but the quicker you get away with it, the less thinking you have to do. D.J. Huntley with the runner on. The Sycamore three-hole hitter struck out twice. Or excuse me, struck out once and lined out in the fourth. Vanderbilt with a win here will host a Super Regional next weekend. Straight back, one and one to Huntley.
73 pitches now for Mason Hickman. Popped up. Harrison Ray will make the catch out number two. A lot of pop-ups for Indiana State. Yeah, well, Hickman throws a straight fastball. It's got late life to it. It almost seems like it gets in the mitt quicker than you think it will at 87, 88 miles an hour, but he does get a little, a lot of flyouts and strikeouts. Seems to get better as the at-bat goes on and if he's ahead in the count. Five pop-ups for Indiana State. One guy that hasn't popped it up, Robbie Enriquez. He's two for two. The rest of the team is 0 for 18. A home run and a double for Enriquez. He looks at a strike. Enriquez with five home runs and 33 runs batted in on the year. The second not in time. Oh, that's a nice job by Watkins, especially with two outs, getting that nice jump off the hop. Duvall wasn't able to handle it. Does he come off the bag? He's got his left foot, and then he tried to retouch. Second base umpire, Doug Vines, all over it, waiting for something to happen it's real easy to do on this turf slide past the bag slide up on top and lose sight of the bag with your foot the Watkins able to hang on Hickman's had a hard time with Enriquez but he has him down one two with two outs line Fielded nicely by Paul. He makes the throw. One of the best defensive teams in the country. 2-1 Commodores. Welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. We just sent Todd down there. We're going to have a camera as he does a little karaoke. Honky tonk heaven. I can handle that. I know you can. That would be some good video. <laughs> Ethan Paul trying to lay down the butt. It is perfectly executed. Jared Watkins really didn't know what to do on this when he was headed to first base on the bunt. Look how far he's playing back. Headed to first, and then he thought, wow, that's my ball. I had to come in and get it by then. It's too late. He wouldn't have gotten him anyway. Second baseman's priority is first base to cover. And Guerrero tried to get over as well, but a well-executed bunt is just almost impossible to defend. Philip Clark, one for two. He did go, says home plate umpire Heath Jones. Philip didn't necessarily agree. If he crosses the plane there, that's a little too far. 
Kept his hands back, but across the plate. Now it's 0-2. Boy, Guerrero's got a nice sweeping breaking ball. Yeah, and lefty on lefty matchups, you really got to keep that right shoulder, that lead shoulder buried in there, and you got to basically eliminate the right side of the field, look up the middle the other way, stay on that slider. Comes back fastball, and that one misses, one and two. And that approach will also get you on that fastball if he tries to throw the outer third. You just got to be quick enough inside if you see it out of his hand coming in there. Lifted high in the air to left. Huntley back to the wall, makes the catch. And almost, it is a double play. How did they turn that? Ethan Paul is caught at first. First of all, Philip Clark with his home run and his last at bat puts a charge into this one. This is the deepest part of the ballpark. Nice job by Huntley. The second time tonight we've seen him with an awareness throw. And wow, what a relay. Huntley gets it in quick. Thinking he might try to tag and go to second, but watch the relay throw. Jared Watkins and got it. That's pretty impressive. All under review. Oh, another one that is just so close. I didn't think there was a chance to double him up. I looked down. I don't. You yeah. know, usually there's not a chance. <laughs> it is one of two coaches' challenges for Tim Corbin. You know, Ethan Paul with so much hustle down the line on that punt. Probably didn't think there was even a play at first base. Starts to get back, but then he's diving because he knows he's in trouble. And it sure looks like first base umpire Brian Miller got it right. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna venture a guess. No, I think he got it right, and Ethan Paul apparently does too, because he's already left the field. Well, we'll get the call here in just a second. He is out, and Indiana State has the double play. 7-4-3, put out at first. Well, remember Ty Duvall hit the double down the, or what we thought was a double down the line in the third, and Huntley picked it up and gunned him at second. Here he is again with the relay throw. A little help from Jared Watkins, the second baseman. So while we've got a second on a pitching change, need to update you that Auburn has won the Atlanta Regional. They have taken out Georgia Tech in Atlanta. And that means that Auburn and North Carolina will meet in the Super Regionals, and it's a rematch of what happened in the NCAA basketball tournament. Remember, Auburn destroyed North Carolina in the NCAA tournament.
now they'll have a three-game baseball super regional next weekend. And of course, the SEC with the most teams in the NCAA tournament with 10. So far, the SEC has gone 20 and eight, six teams still alive, four have been eliminated. The ACC, five of the eight are still alive. The Big 10, just one of four still out there playing baseball. Plenty of teams are making plans for the Super Regional. Here are the teams that have already clinched a spot. Texas Tech, North Carolina, Florida State, Duke, and now Auburn. And for the Tigers, it'll be their third Super Regional. And back-to-back -back years, they have been to a Super. Remember last year, they went down to Florida and got beat by a walk-off home run in game three by the Gators. Yeah, for Auburn, too. Butch Thompson couldn't be any prouder of not only the job him and his staff has done, but what they've accomplished this year. The numbers aren't great for Auburn. They do have Tanner Burns and Jack Owen in that starting rotation. They lost Davis Daniel, one of their starters, but for them to be in a Super this year, that is some outstanding coaching going on over there at Auburn. Hey, for more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, be sure to go to NCAA.com. Well, Austin Cross is the new Indiana State pitcher. Austin, the 6'7", 230-pound junior out of Hillsboro, Kansas, transferred in from Allen County Community College, making his 17th appearance of the year, 22 innings of work, 14 strikeouts, 11 walks. All of his appearances have been out of the bullpen. And he'll pitch with two outs to Pat DeMarco, who has popped up and struck out tonight. First pitch he sees popped up. Is there enough room? There is not. That'll be about five rows deep. Chopper, means charges, means throws, and that one gets past Tomlin. And DeMarco is safe. They're going to send Pat DeMarco over to second base. Jake Means does not make many mistakes at third base. That ball was up the line, and Tomlin not able to handle it. Ball went in the dugout, or hit the dugout, so Pat DeMarco gets... Second base. Give him a single and then an error on the throw will get him to second base. And they will intentionally walk Steven Scott to put him at first and second. They will pitch to Harrison Ray. Well, this is strictly just a matchup thing. Steven Scott, the left-handed hitter there with two outs, which would have been different otherwise. Go ahead and put him on, face Harrison Ray, who hit the ball a long way his last time up to deep center field.
Max Wright out there to talk to his pitcher. Remembers what happened last time and the pitch sequence that they tried to attack Harrison Ray with and wants to relay that to Austin Cross. Nice play by Wright. Keeping the base runners at first and second. Harrison Ray 0 for 2. A couple of home runs on the year for the second baseman. Harrison Ray only one hit so far in this region. That one does get away from Wright. Runners will move up. Sometimes as a catcher, you're expecting that curveball in the dirt, but not the fastball, and it kind of caught Max Wright by surprise. Wasn't able to get his knees down and turn his glove over to block that baseball. And the runners for Vanderbilt move up a base. So they'll probably make a move here and walk Ray to pitch the left-hander Duvall by bringing in the lefty. Tyler Grauer for Indiana State. It looks like they will get Grauer. So we'll step aside and update the change when we come back. Good look at the Cumberland River, downtown Nashville, Tennessee. And just about a mile and a half from the Cumberland River sits Vanderbilt University. That is where we have set up shop this weekend for this Nashville Regional where Vanderbilt trying to close things out and win this regional. They lead 2-1 to one over Indiana State, who has gone to the bullpen now for the third time tonight. They get Tyler Grauer. Tyler's been very good for this team. His 22nd appearance on the year has an unbelievable 1.9 ERA and 48 strikeouts, only eight walks for Grauer this year. The junior left-hander out of Shawnee, Kansas. Yeah, and he's the closer. He has to come in a little earlier, get some outs for this team. And look, I mean, if you walk Steven, or if you walk Steven Scott because of the matchup issue, I would assume you'd have to walk Harrison Ray with the first base open, especially head 2-0. Oh. See what they do here to Ray. Tyler Grau a few, a few days ago against McNeese went four innings, gave up four hits, struck out five. There's ball four. First McNeese on Friday. There's that line. 66 pitches. He's a good one for sure. Nine saves to his credit. You mentioned only eight walks. Some of those include stuff like that where it's basically an intentional walk and 
So that number becomes even more impressive, impressive for Tyler. Duvall, three for six this weekend with 10 RBIs, excuse me, this year with 10 RBIs with the bases loaded. And he'll look at strike one. Ty Duvall. Single back in the third. Was thrown out, trying to stretch it into a double. Just misses. doubt Ty Duvall was sitting all over that slider from Tyler Grauer got it in the right spot lefty on lefty matchup you wait for that ball to look like it's coming at you and when it does you're ready to go and it drops back over the middle of the plate and Ty Duvall got under it and every bit of that baseball pounds it out to right field four runs for Vanderbilt Now Julian Infante, another two-out hit for the Commodores. They have seven two-out hits this regional. They have scored ten two-out runs. They lead it six to one now. Fonte homered his last time, and yes, they did hit it right there. The Vandy boys have opened up a 6-1 to one lead. Himself on that last pitch, you can see him every time the ball gets thrown back to him from Max Wright, he slaps at it. That was just the fourth home run allowed this year by Grauer. Stop Julian Infante right now? The answer is no. Locked in. Back to back home runs for Vanderbilt. Back to back home runs for Infante. Five runs in a row. The grand slam by Ty Duvall and Julian Infante. It's always a tough at bat to face a dramatic home run, but not for Julian Infante, who pounded that ball. Out to left field, got the fastball he wanted, low and in, and that was crushed. Remember, at the beginning of this inning, it was a double play. There were two outs and nobody on. And now Vanderbilt, as quick as they strike offensively, is pinned five on Indiana State. And now Austin Martin in the top of this lineup. Three doubles and three home runs this weekend. 
I don't, that, I don't know that Julian wants this to stop. Austin Martin 0 for 2. Good flow, by the way, for Infante. He's got a nice little flow with the hair going, doesn't he? That must be what's doing it for him. <laughs> right. You get good flow. Yeah, you get good grief, swing. Whatever works. High in the air to right. Playable for Enriquez. And that will be the third out. But five two-out runs by the Commodores. The biggest blast, this one from Ty Duval. Sitting all over that slider low and in. And life in Nashville for Vanderbilt. It's now 7-1. to one. Well, the first three innings, Vanderbilt just uh, one hit. Last three, how about six hits, seven runs, and four home runs. Philip Clark got the party started with a home run in the fourth. Then it was Infante in the fifth, and then last inning Duvall, and then Infante again. Somebody's got to get it started, right? That Let's guy get got this it. party started. They have got it started here at Hawkins Field. Here's Ayers, 0 for 2. Well, they seemed a little sluggish through half this game, you know. I mean, a few base running mistakes. Got an error on the board. But they came to life. Something happened there at the bottom of the sixth. And Austin Martin and J.J. Bleday haven't been the guys that have gotten it going. Well, and that's what makes them so dangerous. I mean, they're going to get you at some point, but if they don't do it, somebody else does. There's no weak spot in this net, in this Vanderbilt lineup. It was a strikeout. Ayers going down for the third time tonight. That is nine strikeouts for Hickman. Now Max Wright, he struck out his last time up. In the seventh inning. Popped him up. That'll stay in the infield. Austin Martin says he has it and will make the catch. Well, Mason Hickman tonight. Fastball command. Elevate for the strikeout. Another strikeout on an elevated fastball. Look at the corner. Strikeout. And then the off speed, the curveball. Freeze up on the inside corner. Another one. Mason Hickman. Been very good tonight. Nine strikeouts, only two walks and six and two thirds. Only giving up two hits. Struggled a little bit earlier in this game, but found it quickly. And those are the guys that you love that don't have their best stuff at certain times, but can find it quickly and recover. And Mason Hickman certainly has done that tonight. Only allowed two hits, both of them coming to Robbie Enriquez. That one's fouled straight back. A home run and a double for Enriquez. It's Kumar Rocker who pitched last night. Getting a little peanut butter toasty in there. Drake Fellows got it started. Game number one for the Vanderbilt Commodores with a complete game effort with nine strikeouts. 116 pitch effort for Drake. That one's popped back out of play. We haven't even seen Patrick Raby this weekend. Kumar went eight, or excuse me, six and two thirds, struck out eight, walked none. He was really impressive last night. Patrick Raby's 9-1 with a 2-9 ERA in 15 starts. And he may not 
see the field this weekend. Well, you'd assume they'd probably try to put him in here in the eighth or the ninth with a comfortable lead. They still got Tyler Brown on the back end in case that goes crazy. Raby had the start against Ole Miss in the championship game of the SEC. Didn't get out of the first. But you definitely think they would want to give him a little work before next week's Super Regional. Patrick Raby right there. We need to get him some work. Three and two on Dane Tofflin. Got Brown on the left of your screen. The pitching coach calling out the signals for Ty Duvall. That ball's hit hard. That's going to bounce off that wall. Steven Scott chases it down in the corner. And Tofflin has a double. Boy, he hammered that one. And Steven Scott knew it, immediately turned around and said, I'm going to chase this one off the wall. That's a curved wall out there, by the way. So you get some funky bounces. Yeah, Tofflin's come to life a little bit. Struggled in the last few games, but he's had a pretty good night. Pounds this ball off the left center gap. Good look at that curvature and that. Yeah, Steven Scott had to go over there and grab it. It's definitely different for sure. Curvature, is that how you say it? That's how I said it. Oh, okay. I don't know. I think that's about right. <laughs> You don't see many curvatures in the hey, outfield six, walls hey, in baseball. Six games in three days, late at night. Things just come out. Sometimes <laughs> they're right, sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> no, I think you were right. <laughs> Popped him up. Harrison Ray getting good at catching pop-ups tonight. That'll be out number three. Luke Fagan is retired. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. The Vanderbilt Commodores, a power display tonight at Hawkins Field. It started in the fourth with Philip Clark. Then it was Infante, his second of the regional. That was in the fifth, and then in the sixth. A grand slam from Ty Duvall in right field. Next batter up, Infante again. Four home runs tonight for the Commodores as they lead at 7-1 to one against Indiana State. 87 home runs this year, now a new school record. Yeah, that's incredible. This offense is just tough. I already talked about They scored 10 runs or more in 40% of the games they played this year. And that's almost unheard of. Austin Morales, the new pitcher. Making his 10th appearance of the season. J.J. Blade 0 for 2. 0 for his last six if you go back to last night. Does have a couple of walks in the mix. His average has dipped down to 351. He started this regional at 357. Hard to believe they put up seven runs in that power display, and Austin Martin and J.J. Blade haven't done anything yeah. yet. Neither but one again, of them have hit. But again, that's a sign of a great team. Preseason number one or two, depending on what poll you looked at. Number two seed in this postseason. UCLA is number one. They've held on to that all year long. That one misses inside. It is now three and one to JJ Blade. Just torched into the right field corner. That'll end up being a single for Bladé. 
They even had a little shift on. They had second baseman Watkins playing a shallow right, but he just hit it 100 miles an hour right past him. Yeah, no shift in the world. He's going to stop this ball. I actually thought first base might have had it. He stumbled a little bit out of the box, but he hammers this ball to right field. He may have twisted his ankle. Yeah, that might have been it because first base really had no shot. But that snaps an 0 for 6 swing for Blade. Gets us to Ethan Paul. He's one for two today. Ethan reached on a bunt down the right side his last time up. High in the air to right, Enriquez. That'll be the first out of the inning. The designated hitter, number five, Phillip. Clark. Here's Philip Clark. Clark, one for three with that home run, his seventh of the year. Southern Miss has taken a 4-3 lead over LSU in the sixth in Baton Rouge. Southern Miss will have to beat LSU twice, though. They want to advance to the Supers. Mississippi State and Miami in a good one. 3-2 game in the top of the eighth in Starkville. Miami avoided elimination this morning. They pounded Central Michigan 18-3. My drop in, long run for Fagan and Huntley. Neither one can come up with it. It gets past both of them to the wall. Clark around second. He'll get in there and a run will score. As J.J. Bladé touches home, it's now 8-1. to one. Scored a triple for Ethan Paul. This is just picture perfect how a lefty should face a lefty. Ball's on the outer third of the plate. Philip Clark not not have, not trying to do too much with it, just pounds it in the left center gap and ends up with a triple. But what a great approach for a left-hander, left-handed hitter against a left-hander on the mound. His fourth triple of the year, and he picks up an RBI in the process. That'll give him 71, a team best 71 runs batted in. So Morales is done. Another Sycamore pitcher on the way. Back in a moment. Nashville's version of the Parthenon. <laughs> <laughs> Vanderbilt leads 8-1. to one. Commodores, nine hits. Four of those have been home runs. They trailed early one to nothing. And they have not looked back. We talked to Tim Corbin, head coach of the Commodores, back in the fifth inning, and he said, uh, in the fourth inning, and he was like, our guys, we're going to turn it around. I'm confident our bats will get going. And, boy, he was right on target. Not too hard of a guess, though, with his offense. Yeah. Evan Giles, a new pitcher for Indiana State. Vanderbilt scored 24 runs in three games here in this regional. 
Not surprising? No. 13th appearance for Evan Giles. 12 hits. High walk total with 12. Only 18 innings. There has been a lot of similarities between all three games that Vandy has played. They've scored eight runs in all three games so far. They also fell behind one to nothing in all three games. Line base hit as the infield was in. DeMarco with an RBI single that will score. Phillip Clark hits now 9-1. to one. And one out of the inning for Steven Scott. This is the 40th time in 62 games. Vandy has had 10 plus hits in a contest. That's in there for a strike to Steven Scott. Yeah, this. 2019 version of Vanderbilt hit 30 points higher than the 2014 team that won the national championship. Already set a record for home runs. And comparable to 2014, they both play defense at the highest level in the country. That ball's hit hard. Enriquez on the run, but that'll drop right in front of him. DeMarco all the way to third. So runners at the corners with one out. The second baseman number two, Harrison Ray. Vanderbilt has had 16 base runners tonight. Harrison Ray back to the plate. 0 for 2 with a walk. He has scored a run. Good breaking ball. Ray swings through at 0-1. Arkansas trying to close out that Fayetteville Regional. They're up 5-0 on TCU in the bottom of the fifth. A win by the Hogs will put them in the Supers. Ole Miss trying to do the same thing. They're up 12-2 on Jacksonville State in the fifth inning at the Oxford Regional. Win by the Rebs, and they're heading to the Supers. Vandy has scored at least a run in the last four innings after being blanked through the first three. The big inning was the five-run sixth on a grand slam and a solo shot. There's a strike, two and two.
That ball is hammered, but foul. That shot of Julian Infante, he just doesn't want to let that bat go, does he? Still holding it. You're hot. Carry that thing with you everywhere. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Can't wait to swing it again. Look. Yeah. That's up. It's full three and two. State came here on April 16th, lost to Vanderbilt 7-1 to in that game. Seventh pitch of the at-bat on the way. High in the air to right. Enriquez back pedals. He will make the catch. DeMarco will, excuse me, Steven Scott will tag up. DeMarco scores. Scott goes to third. And it's now a 10 to 1 game. Ty Duvall, the one that got all this started back in the sixth inning. Last inning with a grand slam. Two outs, runner at third. Ty Duvall fouls it back. This is what it looked like. That last inning just gets the slider that caught too much of the inside part of the plate. He was sitting all over it, stayed back. Pounded that ball into right field, and Vanderbilt wasn't looking too good to that point, but that grand slam gave them new life, and now they've scored 10 runs in this game. And he hit it right there. I mean, yeah, it's like he like he meant to. Oh, and two on Duvall. Austin Martin and J.J. Blade getting ready to hit, but there's two outs in the inning. They're going to need Duvall and Infante to reach. The hitters are always ready to hit, aren't they? When you're hot, when you're not, you keep that bat away from you and sit on the other end of the dugout. And that caught him. So now Julian Infante looking for a third straight home run in three straight innings. Listen to the crowd. Did a couple that direction. Hit one off the 10 earlier. Home run in the fifth. 
Home run in the sixth. Here we are in the seventh. You know he's going to be trying for it. Not sure he'll even see a fastball. Runners at first and third with two outs. You got to throw him another one, right? If those are my fastball. It'd be a mistake. Maybe just show him a. A different angle elevated or throw it way outside and come back with a curveball, but I can't imagine he'd mess with it. Now it's one and two. Good news for Infante is he knows what's coming. Now right. he's got to put a good swing on it. Four breaking balls. That will end the inning. But another three spot on the board for the Doors. They lead it by nine. And welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Well, Duke Blue Devils, one of the last four teams to get into this NCAA tournament. All they did was win the Morgantown Regional. Now they await the winner of this Nashville Regional as back-to-back -back seasons now for the Blue Devils and the Supers. A little, some tidbits about Duke this year, 15-15 and 15 in the ACC. Now before the Regional started, they had won just four of their last 12 games. But now they've won three straight. They hit about 270, middle of the pack in the ACC. But if Vanderbilt's able to hold on here, that is who will be coming to town to face Tim Corbin, Vanderbilt Commodores. New pitcher as Mason Hickman's night is over as we move to the eighth inning. Zach King getting the baseball. Another tall flamethrower for Vanderbilt. 6'6", 210, junior out of Spring Hill, Tennessee. This will be his 19th appearance of the year. Zach started three games this season. Opponents hitting 288 against Zach. The first one he fires in there at 92 miles an hour. Yeah, big arm from Zach King. Three saves on the year also. Just misses. Zach making his 65th career appearance in a Vanderbilt uniform out of Spring Hill, Tennessee. In his career, he struck out 122 in 124 innings. High chopper, and Ray will make the play. One down. I'd say this is a pretty good uh, triumvirate of pitchers. Fellows, Rocker, and Hickman, their number's pretty impressive this weekend. Yeah, and they've 
put them in position to be where they're at now. I mean, they've saved their bullpen. And look at the complete game from Drake Fellows on opening night. Nine strikeouts, only two walks. No walk from Kumar Rocker, and that's what you love to see. These guys are really accurate. These starters for Vanderbilt. There's Drake. And there's Kumar Rocker. Vanderbilt has scored 10 runs tonight. It's the 25th time this year that Vanderbilt has put up 10-plus runs in a season. Again, that's the most impressive stat that all the good things that Vanderbilt does. I mean, 40% of the time they're going to throw 10 up on you? Come on. You might be able to pitch. <laughs> if I did pitch, they would throw up 10. <laughs> Where would you, would you play behind me? You'd be playing defense somewhere? Where would you play? Not behind you. I might get hurt. <laughs> you could catch. <laughs> That's what Rummel High School is saying when they lit me up in the state championship game when I was in high school. South Louisiana. Is that how you blew your arm out? <laughs> they blew it out for me. Just trying everything. Sidearm. Sidearm spinners. Just about to throw it behind my back. Something. Something's got to work. Foul back. Jake Means. Two and two. Jake's had a good regional. Enjoyed watching him play this weekend. Wrapping up his career, the senior. We'll go down on strikes, out number two. Live fastball from Zach King. And that, not really a three-quarters delivery, but he does have a funky little action coming to home play, especially for left-handers. It's tough to pick up the baseball. Miss has put up 17 runs in their regional final against Jacksonville State. It's the second time this weekend they've put up 17 runs in a game. They can hit. A couple freshmen starting for them now that have really come on strong lately. Paracy had his moments there at the end of the SEC schedule, but seems to have found it. Their closer, Parker Caracy. LSU back out in front of Southern Miss now in the eighth at 6 4. LSU trying to win that regional. Out at the plate. One thing's for sure, the Ole Miss is going to be able to swing the bats. They've got a lot of guys with a lot of experience in that lineup. Starting with Ryan Olenek. Thomas Dillard. Thomas Dillard. Has hit two home runs tonight. Gray Kessinger, the shortstop, one of the best hitters in the SEC. I mean, they... Offensively, they are solid. And Thomas Dillard is three for three with seven RBIs today for Ole Miss. And two home runs. Jared Watkins with two strikes, fouls it back. Ole Miss Rebels trying to win that regional. Cruise right through it at home. They are paired with the Fayetteville Regional, and Arkansas leading TCU 5 to nothing. So if the Hogs win and Ole Miss hangs on, those two will meet in Fayetteville next weekend. A place where Ole Miss won a series earlier this year. Yeah, Arkansas, don't, they don't lose much at home, but Ole Miss rolled in there and beat them two out of three. Look at Julian Infante, the senior. Finishing with a flurry. Would love to wrap it up in Omaha. 2-2 Two -two on the way to Watkins. Chopper to third. Martin. 
throw is in time. Inning is over. We will head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Zach King with a nice clean inning for Vanderbilt. Martin Blade and Ethan Paul for the Vandy Commodores. Omaha, Nebraska has always been synonymous with the College World Series. But this year, the action kicks off with a matchup between the Kansas City Royals and the Detroit Tigers. For the first time in College World Series history, you can catch this MLB action here on ESPN, June 13th at 8, 7 central. That's going to be a lot of fun. The Tigers and the Royals, TD Ameritrade Park. Vanderbilt leading it here 10 to 1, trying to get to Omaha. Got to get through Indiana State and close this one out as we're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Austin Martin, the top of the lineup for the Commodores. Austin is struck out, walked, grounded out, flied out. Hitless, the game where his team's pinned 10, 10 runs on the board. Doesn't happen too often from a kid at 413 on the year coming into the night. Mississippi State has knocked off Miami 5 to 2 so the Bulldogs advance to their fourth straight Super Regional. Giles, the right-hander on the mound for Indiana State. Redshirt junior out of Franklin, Indiana. The fifth Sycamore pitcher today. It's been a long day for Indiana State. Had to beat Ohio State to advance to face the Commodores. Good year for Mitch Hannas right there and his team. Won the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. now they beat Ohio State earlier today done a nice job on this guy at the plate Austin Martin he's just one of seven in two games against Indiana State now his second hit of the two games with the Sycamores well Keith Law who takes a look at draft prospects for Major League Baseball at ESPN as these guys in his top 20, including J.J. Blade, who's coming to the plate, he has him going as the fourth overall pick to the Marlins. J.J. with a base hit his last time up. Well, he smoked one to right field. They have the shift on again, but can't do their normal shift for J.J. with a runner on first. But they will play second baseman Jordan Watkins out in shallow right. Shortstop Dungan over near the bag at second. Misses inside. Blade with 26 home runs. None this weekend. 68 runs batted in. You know he's a little gun shot on that fastball in. Got burnt twice by it yesterday. For strike three. First game of the regional against Ohio State had a couple of hits, both doubles and an RBI. He'll go down swinging. Here's the 
is just a perfectly executed pitch right here on the inside corner. J.J. thinks it's a fastball, and it just 12-6 right down into the zone and not able to get the handle on it, but nice location for that pitch. Ground ball to the right side. Scooped up there. They'll try to get the out at second, and they do so. Well done by Watkins, who hit Dungan at second. Out number two. The designated hitter, number five, Philip Clark. Philip Clark, a home run and a triple. Average up to 306. Caught the first two games of this regional. Now the designated hitter. Misses inside, 2 and 0 to Philip Clark. 12 hits, 10 runs for Vanderbilt. Only three hits and one run for Indiana State coming into this game with 40 hits in the tournament. Indiana State the offense has really looked good until tonight. Straight back two and two on Clark. Close at the knees. Smith and Jackson Giles. Tyler Brown in that bullpen as well. Of course, not a good night for Tyler Brown, who has 14 saves on the year. Got hit around pretty good last night. Coach Corbin said they'd use him in the right situation if need be tonight. Threw 30 pitches last night. This wasn't his night. And you wonder, he came in an 8-1 to one game. You know, I mean, a guy that's a closer, Usually high-stress situations, and you just wonder if he didn't have the edge that he normally has. Yeah, and that's a true thing. I mean, if you're a closer, that's the situation you live for, and when you don't have that emotion involved, it changes things for sure. Another payoff pitch on the way to Clark. It misses inside. Here's Pat DeMarco. Scored a couple of runs his last two times up. He has two base knocks today, two for four. It's average. Back up to 300 for Pat. The Commodore center fielder looks at a breaking ball up in the zone. Vanderbilt has 12 hits and 10 runs.
That's lifted into right center. That'll drop in front of center fielder Luke Fagan. And that'll get a run in. It's now 11 to 1, Vanderbilt. Pat DeMarco with a base hit in the sixth, a base hit in the seventh, and here in the eighth, another base hit in the right center. Left fielder number 19, Steven. Three in a row. And it just doesn't seem like you can slow down this Vanderbilt offense. Now Steven Scott, the senior left fielder. Smashes that to right. Right past Dane Toflin. Another run is in as Philip Clark touches home. That'll go as an E3. Well, you make errors because your mind starts to wonder. This game's a little bit out of hand, and Dane Toflin just doesn't get his glove down in time. Ball gets past him, and another run scores for Vanderbilt. That's in there. Four strike to Harrison Ray. Fouled into the Commodore dugout. That's up. Tim Corbin has done it again. I mean, he has put together just another very balanced attacking baseball team looking for their ninth super regional appearance under the coach they have been to 15 NCAA tournaments under Corbs a national title and a runner-up ground ball out to short I throw and yes the foot is on the bag and the inning is over Vanderbilt Three outs away from moving to another Super Regional. Vanderbilt leading at 12 to 1. Close play over at first base a moment ago. This is what it looked like. Yeah, Harrison Ray rolled over to the shortstop, and that's Toplin trying to handle the throw. Did he come back down on the bag before Harrison Ray crosses over? First base umpire Brian Miller said he did. A high throw. Toffin does all he can to hold on to the baseball and get his foot back on the bag. We well, have the top of the ninth. Vanderbilt up by 11. CJ Huntley. Gonna get a get pitch hit for. Walker Grisante comes into left field, replacing Steven Scott. Pitch hitting. Crazy on the Number one, Jordan Schaefer. Jordan Schaefer hitting. For CJ Huntley. Sophomore. Schaefer has played in 19 games now. Has 18 at bats. Six hits on the season. His first at bat here. In this regional is a short one as he heads back. That was gas. From Zach King, that fastball for strike three. A little cut on it as well. well the Commodores under Tim Corbin done things this program has never done before. Three College World Series appearances and a national championship. How about just three NCAA tournaments before 
Corbs arrived here in Nashville. Check swing for Hunter Lewis, who's pinch hitting with one out. He just continues to recruit the best players in America. Had the number one recruiting class last year again. Yeah, for these seniors that have been here, the recruiting classes have been one or two every year, except one year I think they were 14. But, I mean, it's a pretty easy sell. you got one of the best programs in the country, one of the best coaching staffs in the country. Of course, an education from Vanderbilt to go along with it. Andy leads the nation with 51 wins. This is the sixth time the program has won 50 plus under Tim Corbin. Vanderbilt has won 24 of their last 25 games, riding a 10-game win streak. Number two, and Vandy, one out away from hosting a Super Regional. Spencer Wiskus will pinch hit with two outs. Fouls that one straight back. Oh, and two on Whiskus. Ball, Paul charging, throws, and the Commodores are heading to their ninth Super Regional. They pick up their nation's best, the second win of the year. They knock off Indiana State 12 to 1, and the Nashville Regional has come to a close. Wow, 28 runs for Vanderbilt in three games here in this regional. They are tough to beat here at home. Good pitching. Outstanding offense and defense for one of the best teams in the country. Thirteen hits, twelve runs. Vanderbilt behind outstanding pitching from Mason Hickman, who goes to eight and zero on the year. Pick up this win. Their record now fifty-two and ten. So in the matter of minutes, two more SEC teams have punched their tickets. Arkansas a moment ago knocked off TCU and Fayetteville. It's their eighth Super Regional, and for Vanderbilt, it's their ninth. Those teams have already making plans for Super Regional. So Vanderbilt will host Duke next weekend. We'll wait on the dates for that three-game set. 
Duke getting hot at the right time, one of the last four teams in, but playing well here this weekend. Yeah, for Duke, they were playing well last year. Got to the Super, now again runs through that West Virginia regional. Beat up on Texas A&M, beat West, a very good West Virginia team, so that ought to be a really good one coming up next weekend. The Commodores salute another packed house here at Hawkins Field as they advance to the Super Regionals with a 12-1 victory.